Hi and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said and today we're going to be talking about the architectural runway in a scaled agile program. Now the architectural runway looks like a squiggly line that sits at the program tier in the safe big picture. Of course as you know architecture spans across the entire organization's teams and program tier and portfolio but what we're looking for today is we're looking to answer the question as to what actually makes up the um, architectural runway in a scale agile program so as you know in as you may know in agile we are looking to discover and extend uh, the design and the architecture as we continue our iterations and our sprints we look at small units of work and we let the designs emerge from self-organizing teams this concept is referred to as emergent design because it emerges as part of actually doing the work. The problem is if we have a large number of teams that are working on a vision, it's important to have some level of coordination and, and communication because, I mean, there's so many ways, you, as you know, to skin a cat. And so what you will find is, is that even given the same problem, different teams will come up with different solutions to come to solve the same problem. And what that inevitably leads to is a hodgepodge of solutions. You've got lack of consistency across the teams. You've got different architectural standards and guidelines that people are working to and in fact they, they could be contradictory they could conflict with one another and even negate one another so this could lead to a, a uh, very bad experience for the end user and also can can uh, can result in a number of different challenges now this is where when we have a, a an, an agile scaled agile program we might need to look at having a more intentional aspect to our architecture and our design so this is is what is referred to as intentional architecture so this is your set of purposeful planned guidelines that you provide to the agile release train and this spans across all of the teams and this is something that that all of the teams subscribe to so that they have this coherence across all of the different um, elements of uh, of the solution that they're being provided so what is an architectural runway? So the architectural runway actually provides guidance to the agile release train on to do just the right thing at the right time so that they're able to ensure that there's a coherence uh, and an appropriate architecture. We want to be able to reduce excessive regret cost and rework. We want to provide that consistent approach across the, the teams, the systems and the silos. And we want an appropriate element of architecture design and the approach to maintain and enable agility. So the architectural runway spans both emergent design and your intentional architecture as well. The problem we have now is to find a balance across these two things. If you do too much intentional architecture, you end up with an inflexible architecture because you're doing it too upfront. You're basically waterfalling it. It's not responsive. You're not learning as you go along. You have too much rework because you're making decisions too early when you have incomplete knowledge. It's effectively uh, uh, pushing you down a waterfall design model. Okay. You also have an impact on innovation as well because you're not able to uh, adjust and change as you learn through your iterations as you go along. So that's what happens if we have too much intentional architecture. Now, if you have too much um, emergent design, then you end up with another problem. You could have an inconsistent approach because the teams are working at odds with one another. You could have a lot of regret costs because when you find out that one team is building something in one way, another team is building it in another way, and what you end up with, you need to have to do a lot of rework. And then also you could have a lot of reuse and uh, redundancy and replication over there, which leads to um, inefficiency, both both in terms of the solution but also in terms of the, the solution maintainability as well. So the question is how do we get the right balance? Okay, so there are three factors that I would like to bring to your attention that I found are really helpful for you to determine which elements should be uh, should should find their way on the emergent design side and which elements of the architecture should find their way on the intentional architecture. And so we're going to go through an example to illustrate this in a moment as well. So, but before we 
we get started, let's look at the three key factors that are really important as far as getting that right balance. So the first thing is you need to understand what is the lead time. If you've got a requirement and it has a, a significant lead time for you to be able to um, uh, uh, deliver that. So it could be something as simple as, you know, you've got on-premise uh, servers or something you need to put up. And yeah, yeah, believe it or not, in this day and age, I still see organizations where they require not weeks, but sometimes even months to put in uh, an on-premise server. I, I know it's shocking in this day and age, but it still it does happen. Uh, or you've got resourcing requirements where, you, where, where your requirement needs specialist resources that you need to bring in from outside this can impact the lead time okay so this is going to make a uh, uh, going to make a, an impact on whether uh, your uh, your architectural uh, element falls on the emergent design or the intentional architecture side and i'll show you how in a moment through an example the next thing is the ability to to increment over that or the ability to change it okay there's certain things that are a lot harder to change than others right so for example if you if you had a system and you wanted to change the technology that you were using right of course you could change it but if you were to change it midway uh, then that's going to cost you a lot more and would require a lot more rework so perhaps it's something that you want you would want to try and um, uh, articulate and uh, investigate before you get started or at least as early as you possibly can and the third factor is is how important is that for consistency right so you may have certain requirements that are, are have to do with your response to the um, your responsiveness to the end user how quickly do you need to respond how many number of, of, of what kind of security protocols do you want to use um, etc etc so these three elements can help you to to decide whether your whether your architectural uh, uh, element falls in the emergent design or the intentional architecture side so let's do that through a quick example now I'm going to move away from the software uh, uh, um, example to a a, um, a construction example so let's just imagine that we're going downtown and we're making a big building right so it's downtown we've got a, a large building and so there's certain elements over here through here that we're just going to go through and see some of these requirements now let's have a look at that so the first thing I've got over here is carpeting so that carpeting is something that you can it doesn't have a long lead time uh, if you want change your mind before you actually um, ordered it you could you could you could do that and there's no necessarily a need for consistency across the whole the whole um, uh, to a whole organization uh, the whole building but you may require that right but so this is something that we could uh, safely say we can do this in the sprint before we need to lay the carpeting or uh, maybe one or two so it's something that we don't need to look too far in, in advance so that would go on the emergent design same with the lighting okay now let's have a look at the foundations now if we look at the foundations obviously we would want to know the size and the scale of the building um, we would need we once we lay the foundations for us to be able to change those foundations the ability to change we can of course underpin and change the foundations but it's very expensive and it's difficult to do so this is something that you would want to have leading more on towards your intentional side of that something you would want to articulate and explain and um, uh, have a blueprint for in advance okay let's have a look at this one now you've got exotic imported marble now if we if we have a building uh, it may have a quite a long lead time because you you need to find you need to source this it's imported from an external place so again that could fall over there so again as you can see it's very context dependent it very much depends upon your project and your your program but this is the way in which you would think about these things and so windows for example let's just say they're standard windows so this is something that we can we can determine later on at a later date building regulations let's have a look at this now clearly the building regulations is something that we need consistency across all of the teams that we need to be working to a set, set of guidelines so we want them to be clearly articulated so we don't fall foul of the building regulations okay standard tiles hope that's obvious it's going to go over there 
uh, new emergent design. Electro electrical wiring, this is something we can do just in time. We can determine the roots of it just, just in, in the sprint. And the same with the kitchen design. Okay. So there you have it. That's just uh, uh, some, of, uh, some of the techniques that you can use. The three factors that you can look to um, help with determining what goes in your architectural runway. There are two elements that you have for your architectural runway, your emergent design and your intentional architecture. I hope you found that useful. Uh, please do uh, subscribe to um, Safe in the Real World Tips on, uh, from www.sprintzero.com and I look forward to speaking to you next week. Thanks very much. Goodbye.